Hi and welcome back. All right, so in the previous lesson, we saw a problem that our user interface is not responding. Okay, so in order to start solving this problem, what I'd like to do is actually go back to the original project, to this project, and I'd like to put in this code into our project. Now, the idea is, why would I want to do that? Basically, I'd like to see the function get event. I'd like to see the results that it returns, the EV code. Why would I want to do that? All right, let me, let me start over. So we have a problem, and we would like to solve it. So the problem we're having is a general problem, namely that we have a thread that invokes a function like wait for completion, and until that and, and this function blocks so and it's blocking the calling thread which is originally busy doing user interface stuff so now the whole application as far as the user is concerned is blocked not the whole application but the user experience is blocked so how can we solve this so basically in general when we have such a problem what one thing we can do is to somehow poke the infrastructure, the direct show uh, library, the graph, poke the graph or pull the graph and ask the graph, are you finished or what is your state? What is your state? Instead of telling the graph, let me, or instead of invoking a function that's going to come back only when it, once it's finished, it could be an hour. Maybe I'm watching an hour-long movie, so that doesn't make any sense. So I don't want to. I don't want to invoke a function that's going to come back when it's complete. That's that's too long. Instead, what I'd like to do is is be able to pull the graph and ask the graph, "Are you finished? Are you finished?" Now between every every two consecutive questions are you finished are you finished my thread is going to be freely roaming it's going to be available for the user for the user interface so the question is how do we do such a thing how can we how can we basically right get the event oh so here we go so we have a function it's called get event and get event we can call it anytime we want we can call get event to get an event if there is an event. If there is an event, then HR is going to return a success value. If there is no event, we're going to get a, a failure value. So we can get an event if there is one and get nothing if there is nothing. So the question now becomes, how can we poke, how can we poll the graph? Right, that, that, that's basically, I would say, a that's the question right now. Now, before we do this, what I'd like to do is, I would like to invoke, before we actually go back to our to, to the window application and try and fix that, let me first use our old application, the one without the user interface, and what I'd like to do is I'd like to invoke get event in a loop similarly to what they do here I would like to invoke it just in order to print out the EV code so that we can see it intensively I'd like to see the EV code I'd like to print it out and 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 see what the values are alright so let's do that so let me take this block of code and copy it to our old application. I'll put it before the wait for completion. I'll open a curly brace block and control V put the code we dragged, we copied to here and like the yeah still a little bit more like this. Yeah. That's what I'd like to do. Since we have, because this EV code is bothering me, so I'm going to open a curly brace block for our uh, for the wait for completion. And right now, we're, I don't care for wait for completion. I can actually 
comment it out control Z comment it out with its containing block alright so again what I'd like to do is we're going to run the graph and when it's running and playing I'd like to pull the graph and get the the current event now instead of running this code what I like doing instead is writing simpler code this code is really I don't think it's uh, too simple like this and instead of this instead of asking did it succeed right that's exactly what it's asking so I'm going to say if if it succeeded I'm, I'm reinterpreting their code if it succeeded then we'll do this by the way otherwise and again we want to move things inwards so if it succeed do this if it fails but that's not what they're saying they're saying what they're saying is while and they're using the comma operator which is a very I think it's a confusing operator operator very powerful but nevertheless confusing what it says here is as long as this evaluate this up until not up until the comma evaluate this and this is the value to be evaluated for the condition so it says here while and then there is well there is a whole condition here and the way the con and uh, what the compiler does is it evaluates this expression and then it evaluates this expression Right, that that's that is what the comma operator does. This is not the comma that separates parameters. This is the comma operator. It's it, it it shows up in the in the documentation. You can read about it. So what it does is it says whatever is to my left eval evaluate. Whatever is to my right evaluate. But the value of the whole expression is the evaluation of the right side sub expression it's a little bit confusing basically what it says here is as long as HR is successful which means a, an HR comes from over here so as long as get event is successful we will be in the while loop and will again invoke get event as long as we get events, as long as get event is successful, we will invoke it again and again and again. Once it's not successful, once HR fails, then we quit the while. So this loop is good and is good enough to extract a couple of events if there are events in the queue, but if there's no more events, then the loop is broken and the code execution continues after the loop. So that's the way. This is the code. How is it good for us? What what are we trying to do with this code? So I enter in order to make it. And by the way, I can move these three lines to inside my block, right? To in here. Tab tab delete, and this way. So we don't need the. Uh, the outermost curly brace block so we can shift tab once to the left alright so again so we have an infinite loop here and HR we don't need HR we do need these three variables alright so HR if it's successful then well then we, we also ultimately have to right only if HR is successful only if get event got us an event only then do we need to release the event parameters and that's what free event parameters does so that's good that's within the block but according to their code if it's a failure value then we should break out of the loop however if we break out of the loop the code execution is going to continue and the application is going to stop so we might get if there is an event initially we might get it if there is none 
will not get it. In any case, after one, two, immediate, almost immediately, our application is going to end. That's what's going to happen. You know, I would even say, because this is a really, I, I find it a bit confusing, so let me even remove the while. Alright, so it's, uh, all I want is just to get one event, and I want to see what values I get from get event. So let me put a breakpoint right after get event, but this is not for the break, but for uh, print. I'd like to print the EV code, right? There is a value here, EV code. So EV code, let me take it. Print EV code, and I'd also like to print HR. Curly brace, HR. All right, now if I run my application, it's going to, it's going to end abruptly, very quickly. Probably we're not going to hear anything. Let's test it. Let's see what it does. So let's run it. I'm listening in. Couldn't hear anything. That was expected. Let me see the output, if there is any output. I'm looking for the printout. There we go. So what we see here <coughs> is that EV code is zero and that HR is EA abort, which means I have nothing to give you. This is a failure value. That's not SOK. It's actually it's a negative value. It's a failure value. So alright, so actually this is very peculiar. What is going on here? I mean, shouldn't we get shouldn't we get some sort of well actually I don't know, you know, let's be open-minded. And let's again, let, let, let's run it again. This time, let's use the infinite loop. Let's get more values. Let's see what we're getting. So let me run it again. And I place the output over here. I can't hear anything. Let me pause it. Oh, when I pause the Visual Studio, suddenly I got um, a non-zero E abort value. Interesting. If we scroll to the top, from the beginning we're getting zero and E abort. When we're getting E A abort, that's an event abort, abort event, that means the function basically failed. And the EV code doesn't mean anything. There is no zero EV code. We'll discuss maybe later the, va the possible values of EV code. In any case, nothing was happening. Basically, we're not getting any events from the graph until we pause the Visual Studio, which is peculiar. But we were not getting any events from the graph, and also we were not able to hear anything from the graph very strange okay alright so this is uh, and we're not able to hear anything alright so we're out of time right now but as you can see it's, it's very strange if you actually try and play with this code and play with get event you would see how very confusing it is it's, I wouldn't say it's straightforward by any means Alright, so again, we're out of time. Let me stop here, and we'll continue in the next lecture and, and fix our user interface so that it does become responsive. Okay, so as always, thank you very much, and we'll see you in the next lecture.